Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope everybody had a good week and a good weekend coming up. Today we got one that I've honestly just been looking for footage for, I feel like, since the beginning of the channel. They're a really popular butterfly fish, very pretty, very active, and also a very peaceful fish to have in the tank. Good for beginners as well that are looking to get a new butterfly in their tank. Today we are learning all about the raccoon butterfly fish. Prices that I was seeing around online nowadays, about $70 to get a juvenile. If you want one a little more size, you're going to pay a little bit more to get one. Tank size, surprisingly enough, they usually take about a 120 by the end of their lifespan because they do surprisingly get pretty big in the tank. So you'll want to make sure you got plenty of room for them, especially as they do get bigger. Care level, I would say easy. They're a great beginner fish. They're great for pretty much anybody at all levels of the hobby. Temper, I would say very peaceful. They aren't very aggressive with other fish, whether big or small, even the little gobies and your little reef fish like wrasse. They don't even mess with them. So overall, just a very peaceful fish that doesn't get territorial in the tank. Reef compatibility, I would say no. Now in the video, you know, they are around a bunch of reefs. The problem is they do get very picky with certain corals. They will pick at corals and even inverts. A lot of their natural diet in the wild is corals and inverts. So they're going to be chasing those kind of things and looking for them in the tank to eat. So if you do have a very full blown out reef tank that you do not want to get picked on, I would definitely stray away from adding the raccoon in there. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. You know, I like to keep my tank warm. I'm usually on 78 degrees. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.020 to 1.025. So everything's basic there. No crazy kind of temperature changes or salinity changes that you need. It's just the basic levels that you need to take care of them. Some butterfly fish are very known to perishing whenever there are spikes in the tank, whether it's ammonia, nitrates, or salinity or too fast acclimation, so be very cautious, keep up with your water changes, watch your levels, make sure they're staying pristine, that way you have a very happy butterfly fish in the tank. Max size, they can get a whopping 8 inches. Now most of the time, the ones I see usually hit about 6 inches long, and that's about it, but there are some of those that even get a little bigger. So you have a 6 inch long fish in your tank, you're going to need a pretty large tank for that. So make sure as he does get older, if you bought him as a juvenile, he was only like 2 inches long and you put him in a, you know, a 75 gallon, you'll definitely want to upgrade that later on as he does get bigger. Colors on them is a big reason why everybody likes them. The yellow body with the black stripes running all down him and then even has that white shadow by his eye. He's very pretty, very eye catching. Diet, so I'd say they're an omnivore. They eat a lot of different kinds of things. You want to try to have a variety of food in the tank and in your fridge to be feeding them, especially whenever first introducing them into the tank. That's the main issues we see with them is them not coming out to eat. Make sure you got some frozen like brine, blood worms, little mysa shrimp, all those kind of different cubes you can get in a pouch. Have those on hand. Make sure to have some dry seaweed that you can cut up and put on a clip. That's always a really good thing. And then even pellets and flakes, you know, just something that appetize them to say, hey, this is some good food over here. Come try it out. Now, if you are trying all of that and you're still having a hard time getting them to eat that portion food, you can feed them something more likely that they'll eat in the wild, like a microalgae, tube worms, or even an anemone. So a big thing people will do is they'll put little bitty anemones in their tank and hopefully they'll go after them and eat those as well because that's what they're used to eating in the wild. So I know it sounds crazy to put a coral in the tank just for him to eat it, but a lot of times, sometimes that's all it takes. Origin, they come from all over the place, from Hawaii, Indonesia, even Japan. They're found all over the reefs in the world. Compatibility, you know, they usually do well in them fish only with live rock tanks. They do really well whether they're in tanks with very small fish or they can even be in tanks with very large fish. You have big angels, big tangs, even triggers. Some of the more predatory fish they do find in because they get larger and they're just very peaceful towards everybody. I would not house them with another raccoon, 
butterfly fish, but you can house them with other species of butterflies. So if you have like a copper band in your tank, they would go together. But I would recommend not trying to pair them up or putting a group of raccoons in a tank. It just will not work out. After that, that pretty much hits on everything I needed to hit for the, taking care of the raccoon butterfly fish. If you've ever taken care of one, had some great results or some bad results, please leave your comments down below and your experience because that's how we're all going to learn more about this fish and how to better take care of them. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video, and I will see you all later.